Right. Here we go again. Tuesday night this time. That's a, that's a new one, isn't it? Uh, hopefully it'll be all right. Monday's a crap anyway. Has anyone had a good day? Everyone had a good day? I've had a bit of a, bit of a rubbish day actually. You know, in lockdown you're sometimes like, oh, oh, no, today's not for me. It's just not for me today. Mm. Bit of foliage. This is actually a Virgin Mary for those who are interested today. I didn't have the, um, the bloody element. For that reason, it's a little bit crap. But anyway, here we go. Some of you have already noticed my, my new piece of set. That was, uh, that was gifted to me by Jamie, my husband. Look at that, on air. That's us now. I'm a little bit early as well because I just want to make sure that I'm kind of ready to go. How is everyone? Hi. Oh, what are you drinking? I just said it. Um, hello. 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 Welcome. Gosh, it's going to be an exciting one today. Um, by the way, uh, how funny is that video, um, that photo that I posted yesterday of me and Nick on the front of Bliss magazine? What are those eyelashes about? The um, individual ones? Oh my God, absolutely hilarious. I couldn't believe it, I was at my mum's and I found the, uh, she's done a scrapbook and I've taken some photos so I will, I will share some mothers because there is some absolute gold on there. Um, and it was just funny, I thought I'd share it with you. But yeah, it's had a great reaction, so. Uh, yeah, the lashes, oh my God, what was that? Well, that wasn't even a thing. It was never a thing. Oh God. Um, right, so let's see if my guest is ready and waiting. No. Okay, so today I am having a conversation with an amazing actress. She, she's got a kind of a different story to me and that's why I'm excited. Oh no, I haven't put my ring light on. Oh. Here it is. There you go. Now I'm beautiful. Ugh. Should I start again or? Well, I've done it now, so here we go. Anyway, um, yes, Louisa. I mean, I should do an introduction when she's ready to join the chat. This is the thing about being a bit early. Um, I feel like now I'm introducing her too soon. But anyway, uh, we worked together um, I actually worked with her on a film called Fractured that I co-produced with our production company, Jumpstart Productions. And she, here she is, hold on. So, <laughs> she, she was amazing because she came onto the project really late. I think it was like a few days before. And she only found out on the plane over from LA that the character spoke near perfect Swedish. She found that out on the plane. So uh, yeah, she was amazing and we were all blown away by her talent and her commitment and just the fact that she was so up for being part of what we were doing and it was amazing. Um, so I'm really excited to have Louisa because she started EastEnders as Ruby Allen when she was 16. I think, I'll check that with her, but I think she was 16, depending on where her birthday was. Um, she was in the show for two years and then she had a big hiatus of about 12 years where she went off and did other projects and went to LA and um, now she is back in EastEnders. She's back on Albert Square and she's back playing Ruby. So I just think that's a really interesting angle for my show that we haven't had yet and uh, I can't wait. And she's also, she's had the most amazing... Ow, oh, I'm talking about you. No, it's is. really nice to hear. You continue. Okay, one sec. I'm just going to say the thing about your storyline, which was about sexual violence and sexual assault and consent, because it was just amazing. It must have been such an honour and a privilege to carry a storyline like that, and you were just amazing. Um, so I'm very thrilled to see your face, number one. I've not seen you in so long. I know. And also, it's not even because of lockdown. It's just because we haven't seen each other in so long. Hello, hello, hello. How is it? Is it like, is it all right being back at work and all yeah. of that? Yeah, it's, I was really nervous because obviously 
we're very tactile as actors. So to be told you're going to record a TV show where there are stunt scenes, fight scenes, kissing scenes, but at a social distance, we were like, hmm, how is this going to work? Um, but yeah, it's fine. I'm probably safer at work than I am in Sainsbury's. Yeah, um, absolutely. Totally, yeah. And it's honestly, some of the, the tricks and the things that they're using, I'm not sure how much I can say, if I'm honest, are amazing. Right. You will watch an episode of EastEnders and just think it's a normal episode of EastEnders. That's incredible. Oh my yeah. God, I'm so jealous that you're getting out the house. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been like, yes, I'll come back. Come yeah, on. I was like, yeah, I'll be the first one back. <laughs> Okay, so for some of the international followers and some people who might not know, um, can you please just tell me about Ruby from your point of view? So who is she to you and who is she as part of EastEnders? Okay, so my first job whilst I was still at school, I was 15 years old, was EastEnders playing Ruby Allo. So I first of all went into the show, this was like 16, I'm 31 now, so you do the maths. A very long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I went in as a, a gangster's daughter. So I went into the show with my dad at the time. And he sort of pretty much took over the square, um, which is like the famous setting in EastEnders. Um, and yeah, I was a young character. I was a schoolgirl. You know, I had boyfriend problems and the things that you go through as a 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, I was there for two years. But they killed off my dad, so I left as well in a taxi, as you nice. do. And that was it. That was, yeah, over 15 years ago. And then I got the call to go back. <laughs> what on earth is that? The time goes so quickly, doesn't it? I yeah. actually missed my, I missed my first question, which is, Louisa, are you Ruby Allen? But we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, so I think my main kind of formal question, as opposed to just catching up, is I can't imagine what it would be like if someone said to me now, you need to go back into Skins and play the character that you played. Oh my God, I can't do the maths. 12, 13 years ago. Wow. Well, it was 2007 was the first step, was the first series. I'm sure someone can tell me. But anyway, like what would, what would that be like going back to that character and having to think about what's happened to them in that gap? And just from an acting point of view, what was it like having to come back and reincarnate the same character 12 I guess, years later? I guess what is great about the time frame that we've not been in either show is actually you are going back as a different character. Right. If I think of myself now as a 15 year old to who I am now, I am a total different person. Yeah. So in a way, you are going back with the same foundations and you're coming from the same family. And, you know, for me, for example, she is still the, a, a daughter of a gangster and she's lost her mum and she's lost her dad. And she's pretty much been an orphan, I guess, ever since. So it was, it's easier because you're not sat there thinking, oh my God, I've got to think of all, of all the traits that she had. You're a different person. It's 50 yeah. years later. But what's been great is, Going back to the show so like so many years on, obviously the story team and the writers have dug into their files and they do keep bringing up things that from all that time ago. So it's, it's really nice because obviously she has such a history with characters that are now still in the show, i.e. Yeah. Oh God, that. yeah. You mean they filled in some blanks? Yeah, where they really, Then you're like, they oh, really, remember that time. Oh, wow. Time. And, and that's been really nice actually because Although I feel like I've come back as a new character, there's always constant reminders that, you know, you've been here before and mm. you're sort of part of the furniture already. So that's yeah. been really, really good. So they've kind of done the work for you in the time that you were not there. You may as well yeah, have still been there. Yeah, like, before I went back, I had a phone call with the, current, the exec producer at the time and sort of said, you know, where, where, where do you want me to place her? Do you, who do you want her to be? Because yeah. when I was there as a child, I was very naive and... You know, but he said, no, I want her to come back and be sassy and confident and independent and all these things. Because you've got to see how she's stood on her own two feet for yeah. the three years. Yeah. So I've got lots of money and she owns businesses and she, you know, so it's, um, I probably prefer her now than I did back then. Right, okay, There's more about her now, but obviously, because you have more life experience. As a yeah, 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 yeah. I guess, uh, I mean, that, my next question is actually, 
obviously when you were so young, you were straight out of drama school, weren't you? You just yeah, I, was, I was still at school. I went oh to wow! So at the time, well, that must have been like, haha! I've got a great job, and this is so great. I just want to know that experience of getting the job the first time and everything that comes with, like I've discussed about, you know, people that you were kind of on the periphery of your life and then they're suddenly like, oh, my friend April. And you're like, what? I haven't seen you for years and now yeah. you're my friend. Yeah, Like yeah. that whole thing. Did you experience that the second time round or was it kind of like the people that you, you know, as an adult, you were like, no one cares you know about me now. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, no, I don't know her, I don't know her. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a total different experience. I think as, wow. as a child, and at a point when I went into EastEnders, it was 16 to 18 million viewers. Wow. It was huge. It was before wow. Netflix. It was before yeah. reality TV. If you were in a soap, everybody, even if they didn't know the show, knew you. Yeah. Because you were on the front of magazines and you were everywhere. So this time round, which is actually really nice because I'm an adult now, I can, apart from social media, you kind of want more of your personal life to yourself and all of those things. So going back into the show now, and it's, I still love it as much, but naturally because of the way TV has gone, you know, we're on five to six sometimes million viewers now. So yeah, it, yeah. it's a diff naturally it is a different show. So it feels like a total different job in that respect, if that's right. what I mean. Yeah, I think yeah. it is what I mean. I think it's also the, kind of the impact that it has on you having, because you now know how to deal with it. You sort of have the experience of like, yeah, you 100%. know, when you're so and young. And as friends and all the rest of it, you know, when you get to this age, having a job is just about paying your bills. Yeah. So the whole, you know, the excitement that used, that used to come when we were that age, mm -hmm. Not the same. People were just no. like, thank, thank God you're working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you God I've got a job. Yeah. So I guess that that kind of nicely leads me on to the hiatus that you had. And obviously that's when we met. And, mm. you know, you were looking for other projects. And at the time, you were in LA. So when I met you in... It sounds very fancy. It <laughs> does sound so fancy. But I think, so I think my experience, and you can tell me about yours, but my experience was I thought, okay, well, Skins has set me up forever. I can... I can walk out of this show and I can just walk into anything and I can get an agent like that. And, you know, I'm on top of the world. And actually that wasn't how it worked for me. It was, it was, you know, I was walking into an already saturated market that is even more saturated now. And it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks that I was not as important as I thought I was. A, you think you're quite important when you're a teenager. And B, I, you know, the success of the show and what was happening to some of the other people. I was like, well, I can go and win an Oscar come on, I can be like Dev in Slumdog Millionaire, I'm going to win an Oscar as well. And it just didn't happen that way. So when you came out of EastEnders as such a young person, did you think, right, cool, well, I'm going to LA and I'm going to be in, and you were, obviously, you did do some big Hollywood movies. Um, so just tell me about how that was for you. It's interesting. So when I left EastEnders, all of, so it's different for me and you. You right. left the show with lots of other young actors at the same time. And it was, a, I guess it was a bit of a rat race as to who yeah. gets what next. When um, I left EastEnders, I was, you know, it's a, you're not leaving with anybody else. However, when I left EastEnders, I was six, nearly 17. All of my friends that I went to drama school with were still at college. They were still training. Oh, yeah. I was out in the big wide world on my yeah. own so yeah it was it was really really scary and I remember when I knew I was leaving the show I was sat with my two best friends that are performers um like that evening they came to mind because I was just short you know it's like when you're 15 oh my yeah. life ended. and I was like what do I now do do I now go to college like it was yeah. a, it's a really strange time anyway luckily for me I went straight on to Strictly Come Dancing yeah which was which really helped and you know it wasn't the show it is now it wasn't it was it's massive now it's like life changing now it was still pretty massive for me back then to be honest yeah but i did that and then i went straight into the bill for two years and then so i was on a roll from leaving eastenders so i didn't really get that feeling until about five years later when all of a sudden it was really difficult to be seen by casting directors and i was told at the time it's because you did a soap and I thought, 
but it's a what? really popular TV show. Like, what, what, what does, what's the problem with that? And there is a bit of stigma. And, you know, back then people used to say it's because you're typecast, because so many people know you for one character, it's hard to break that. But yeah, yeah for me, it was quite a few years later that I thought, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. Right, right. Um, and I have been lucky and I've been to America and I've been to Canada and have some, had some amazing experiences. But then on the other hand, I've gone without work for a year. I've gone and got, you know, what they call a normal job. Um, yeah. But I think it's all part of the process. Like I don't, even during those times, yes, it's stressful, but it's not really like... Your do you work. ever feel like because I have this thing of like my first thing and it's the same for you but I feel like my first thing being such a huge huge success and then like everything has to has to match that everything has yeah. to be as good as that or it's not successful or it's not good enough what, what I've realized is it never will be because that was your first job yeah Really good point. Actually, That's a great point. Because I've now gone back to EastEnders, which was that first job. Yeah. And it still doesn't feel the same for me because yeah. it's not the first time. Right. So, That's you know, so interesting. It's not, the, it's not the first job. And I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, kind of like a first love, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, when you're that young as well, you're like, oh, God, I'll never get over this. And then, of course, you do. And you're marrying a lovely man and I'm married and, you know, you, you, you move on, don't you? Because when we met, we were in a very different situation. Well, you yeah. wasn't. I was. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah you lucked I out, though. What, I think that's what you have to hold on to. And it's only that I've gone back to EastEnders that I've realised, oh, yeah, this feels like home. Like, yeah. this was what was put so me on the map. Of course, uh -huh. I'm always going to be thinking, oh, um, you know, yeah, I'd love to go and do a Netflix show now. Who wouldn't? Yeah. But in this game, you're just lucky to have a job. 100%. 100%. So many, especially at the moment, so many of our contemporaries, our friends even, are, you know, doing the pay the bills job. Because who knows when the arts is going to get some more funding and the theatres oh, and yeah, the blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just terrifying. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's yeah. it's weird because it's almost like a leveller because I feel like it's been me on my own just out of work for years. And now you're and, going, oh, yeah. And now, oh, everyone... Everyone's in the same boat, so that's yeah. okay. It's not yeah. just me, you know? Don't you feel like lockdown, I mean, and I still ha technically had a job, even though I wasn't working. It, it was, for all my friends, it just took the pressure off. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, you didn't have to worry about auditions. and Yeah. You weren't working because, well, we're in lockdown. And yeah. that was a really nice feeling, and that's what made me think, like, next time round, when I'm not working, you know, I will. I always sort of find a part-time job or something else because I can't just sit still. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to put that much pressure on myself because actually this is quite nice just yeah. to be. And it's see it's that can... trait, it's that actor's thing, isn't it? It's always needing the next thing. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Yeah. And, you know, even if it's like the next audition, you think, okay, well, I've done, I've done a really great, a really great take and I've got that in the bag. Of course, you never hear anything. You didn't get it. So then you're like, oh, well, where's the next one? Where's the next one? And this experience has really been so, like I said, levelling. It's just, it's just like, actually, I do want to grow tomatoes in my back garden and that's okay for today. And I don't need to... Happen. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Oh, mainly I'll be watching you and Ben cooking beef rendang. You know, that's, that's my new... That's my new yeah, pastime. we had this really big, great idea to do all these cooking videos and basically it ended up being me nagging Ben. When are we next going to do the cooking video? <laughs> I have a bit of a problem, so I was like, Let's just stop. <laughs> let's just let's, let's just do two and leave it at that. We're gonna do one a month. I mean, let's okay. See. Yeah. Well, that's that that will work for me. Yeah. Um, so I think I've got probably one more question that's like a formal one for me, and that is, what is it about this industry that keeps you part of this industry? And oh, I don't like, know. I ask myself all the time. <laughs> I know. Same. I'm like, what? Literally, me and Jamie had the conversation today. Like. It was like, just should we just um, should we just not do this and like open up a mac and cheese shop in Brighton and just like, I yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be great? Like yeah. one speciality, and that's just that's just it. Yeah. So what is I it? What is the essence of it that you don't do a part time job and you just you're just like, see ya, I'm done. I think it's, and this is really sad, but the pressure of or what we think of what everyone will think. Yeah. 
I've come up with some amazing ideas for businesses and I know I really enjoy them. And you know what? If they took off, I wouldn't need to act. But there's a part of me that just cannot... I love it. I love my job. First and foremost, I love it. But when you're talking about in the times of you can't get an audition and no one will see you and you can't pay your bills and what keeps me there, and I do sometimes think it's the worry of other people. I don't really know. Interesting. Or it's the, well, I was in this position before and then something come along. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. constantly waiting for that phone call because you've had it yeah. before. The same this time around with going back to EastEnders. I was done. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I can't wait for the phone to ring. It's giving me anxiety. And then my agent texts me saying, EastEnders have called. And I was like, yeah. Because obviously Whatever. it was like a lifetime later. And then now I'm back again. And I'm in the same position and I'm doing it all again. So it's yeah. mad. I think for me... I, I think it's that. I don't really know. I, all well, I, I think if someone asked me, I'd have to say I think it's, it's part of my identity. I feel like it's part of who I am. And so if I we stop doing it, then who, who, like, who am I? It would be a really yeah. scary place. And a bit like, you know, your experience has been who you've identified as since your formative teenage years. So I think even if I was working as a florist, I'd still be an actor working as a florist. Do you know what I mean? I don't know as if I could girl. ever shut that door. Yeah. Crazy. Maybe right. because we were so young. Maybe because we were so young. Maybe. So we, Maybe. I don't know any. I don't know any different. I can't remember really life before being an actor because I was at school. And yeah. who was I when I was twelve? Was it? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I was actually... Yeah, we're still here. We're still here. I know. Just plodding away. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember... I don't remember. It was video. It was on a videotape. When I was three, I did a performance at my great-grandmother's care home. And I was... I think I might have even been on a table. And in the video, I end my performance. And I'm like, clapping time. It, clap, clapping time to all of the old folks. Mm. <laughs> like, even back then, it was part of yeah, it's in what you. I was doing. It has to be in you because I think, you know, I know some amazing actors and performers and, and they, have, they haven't continued because mm. for whatever reason, whereas I just, I feel like to put up the fight for this many years, it has to be like something that you're so passionate about. Yeah, it and it is a fight. Hard. It's a fight. You're right. Yeah. You're basically in battle. <laughs> I mean, kind of mainly with yourself and your own mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean, oh, my life's so hard. I mean, it's hard when you're getting knocked back after knocked back after knocked back. Yeah. There's only so much your self-esteem can really take. Yeah, it's just shocking. Um, yeah. I've got a couple of questions from people who have been really lovely and sent some stuff in. So Tammy and, um, Tammy X1999 and uh, La Vida Laura, cute, um, kind of have the same question, which is, what would your dream storyline be for Ruby on EastEnders? For Ruby, oh, interesting. So I literally was saying this at work today. Oh, interesting. Um, I, think, I think because I have done a storyline that sort of opened her up to women feeling like she's part of the sisterhood. Um, I either consent storyline. I was saying that at work today, like it would be really nice to follow on with that because I do feel like she's a character that women now can relate to and feel, you know, that they gain something from maybe. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And you did Not, so, and so many amazing things. Character. like. I mean, because of this, naturally, because of the storyline that, that I did. Um, so I would like to continue with that. So I'd like to do something maybe surrounding... I don't even know if I'm going to be saying this. It's not set in stone. This is my idea. Um, yes. Like surrounding maybe miscarriage or just a just a topic. Something that's like a taboo topic that Another then you can normalise. That we can normalise, yeah. Because yeah. I think it works. She's a 30-odd-year-old, you know, yeah. um, character in the show. Maybe something, basically, yeah. Another mm, it really, topic. I mean, your consent storyline really did feel like a moment. Like it felt like so many people responded to it. It was just, it was the way that you were presented in the media as well when you were doing interviews about it. Like no one was shying. It wasn't kind of, oh, well, you know, Louise has got a slightly 
uh, you know, controversial storyline. You were out there on this morning, you were doing newspaper articles and you yeah, were, yeah, it was, so. it was received so well. So I think something like that would definitely be. They did it so well because it sort of came out of nowhere. I literally was back in, on screen for like four episodes and then it happened. Oh, wow. So it just came out of no. Honestly, it was a bit like, who is this character and what has just happened to her? What a gift. Which, which, was, which was good because at the time I remember being like, no one's going to care, no one's going to care because no one knows the character. Like, and sometimes oh. if you don't care about the character, you don't really yeah, yeah, true. Obviously you would care about that, but you know what I mean. Um, but that's why it works because you didn't really know who this character was. So yeah. they weren't trying to play out the storyline with a, you know, like a, one of the most popular. It was exactly how it would be if you read it in the newspaper. Like you don't know who this person is and you don't really know what's happened. And it's your take on it. You know, what, how yeah. what you believe is right and wrong and whose fault was it and all of those things. So yeah, that was really good. Amazing. What good answer. I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah. What's uh, Ellie? Ellie and Mac says, "What's your favorite project that you've been in?" Hmm. And if you, you don't say fractured, me. I will be offended. Yeah, fractured. <laughs> By the way, when you said about um, finding out on the plane about talking Swedish, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I can't believe you did that. that was, I love that the fact that scary. you couldn't even you couldn't even speak to us. You were just up in the sky. 32,000 feet, yeah. you were like, what is going on? So let me explain what happened. I read the script, but I missed that part. I think, how did nice. I miss that? I can't really remember. Well, it was probably written in English, and it just said in the stage directions, she speaks near perfect Swedish, and then the lines would have been written in English. In English. Yeah. So I'd obviously read the script and missed that bit. Anyway, and I remember being on the plane and reading that, thinking, I can't do this job. I'm on the plane now. I was like, what am I going to do when I land? I can't, I can't do that, this job. Do I just pretend that I missed my flight? Like, I didn't know what to do. Oh, my God. But it was, yeah, it was, um, we did it. I mean, yeah. And, and actually, my, my Swedish friend, Sandra, came to see one of, the, one of the screens in London. She was like, it's not the accent or the performance. It's what's actually being said that doesn't make sense in one of the lines. And I was like, in one of the lines? The girl was on the plane ho 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 over the, over the, um, the Atlantic. Yeah. It's one line out of however many. I'll take it. I'm glad she said that. At least yeah. she wasn't like, what was she talking about? No, exactly. And also you had Jordan, who, whose character actually was Swedish. The character of Alva was part Swedish. And he was sitting next to you in the back of the car, just absolutely knocking you out of the park. So the yeah, fact that so you... Fun. And I'm not... How many... Did you land... And come straight down to Brighton? Yeah, or did you have a day? Brighton. I can't really remember. I think... Oh, my God. I must have gone home. Came straight you've blocked it out. It's so traumatic. You've blocked it out. <laughs> yeah. No, I just didn't... I just had a moment when you said it. I was like, oh, my God, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Um, yeah. But how anyway. fun was it? It's so... To be honest, it's so nice to work on a project like that. Like, it's someone's yeah. baby for a start. Yeah. Um, and then you... Like, we just created it together like I remember the the night shoots that we did so the last night of filming I think we basically obviously all the windows are blacked out because it's now probably like I don't know four in the morning and it's daylight outside and we were just like we had to get it done no one tell us what the time is no what a, do you remember we just yeah and it was a, it was a fight Lou we were literally like fighting each other oh my I God. smashed then, your head with a with a sugar glass vase yeah, yeah i love the fact that freddie's do you remember freddie and mel from sweeting lane yeah freddie's just written the food was great on that set it was <laughs> it really it was. was it was it was one of the things you know when you're so knackered and, you, and suddenly she just drives up in a coffee van and you're like oh, i love oh, you yeah it was so great <laughs> we need to anyway that's not the answer tell me what your favorite project you've worked on is favorite project it's really hard because Whenever I answer this question, I always say strictly. And obviously, that's not even an acting job. But that, yeah. and maybe that's why. That, for me, is like... Maybe. That was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It was the best thing I've ever experienced in my life. Like, it's just something I will never... I will forever be grateful for. Is it... So it's prob probably more about how it made you feel, as opposed I, to... 100%. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, that God, is, I'm so jealous. How would you get me on that show? 
I had I Danny Harlow on last week, that. and she was I, like, "I done Strictly." I was like, "God, I know why can't I get on?" Maybe there? we'll afterwards we'll um, give her a message. Okay, great. That would be, that would be great. I, I would I would probably win. I'll be honest. Oh, it's so fun. Um, what? So, Karis Hodges wants to say wants to know what. Which other character would you have liked to play if you could have picked? Now, I don't know if she's talking specifically about EastEnders there. It's quite an open question. But maybe we'll go with an EastEnders character, because it might yeah, be... let's go with an EastEnders. It I'd might narrow like, the field. I'd like to play Janine, maybe? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Someone yeah. asked me that, and I said Joe. And they were like, you can't, because he's a boy. I was like, that wasn't part of the question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to play a cool character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, any tips on on starting acting as a young teen? Tips. Tips on starting acting. Yeah. <sighs> Don't do it. <laughs> I, I literally have the same thing. Any time I go like into a film school or a school, I'm like. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I always say that. Would I let my kids go into this industry? Mm. No. Um, you've just got to have such a tough skin. I don't know how to tell you to do that or to have that. But you've just got to be so thick-skinned because it's a long road, so you have to have lots of patience. Yeah. Uh, you really have to believe what is meant for you mm -hmm. will be for you and what isn't. Mm -hmm isn't and you have to let things go when they don't go your way or if you don't get an audition or all the rest yeah. of it and enjoy and also, it. You have and also to keep really people enjoy what you're Sorry, doing you. otherwise yeah it will constantly take over your life and cause you stress and anxiety and we've all been there you just have to take it for what it is and i think also surround just or try to surround yourself with people when you're that age who don't who are like the real deal. You know, people who like are friends with you for you and regardless of you trying to be an actor or whatever, because you're going to need them. Yeah, and people that support eventually. you. People that really, really support you. And they're yeah. there for your highs and they're there for your lows. Yeah, 100%. Um, oh, good, a question about Strictly. Uh, Anna Shmi 85 I loved you on Strictly. My question is, do you still dance? And are you still friends with your partner? P.S. I loved your Paso. And then one of the like dancing lady emojis. Oh, I loved it so much. Oh my God, it was, you were so good on there. It was just ridiculous. I loved it. Um, I'm also friends with my partner. Yeah. Sorry, I was reading the comments. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> oh, so do you still dance? Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I guess, I guess they're talking like ballroom in Latin, not just like... Slap yeah, drops on the weekend. Um, for Ben. Because yeah. I was for watching. Um, no, I, so I didn't for years after that. And then I did, I've done a musical, Grease, where I danced a bit. Um, and then recently I got to do the Children in Need Strictly special. Oh, yeah. I got to dance again. And, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Who was your partner for that one? Orca. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's amazing. We, got, we literally, amazing. we met and it was like, right, on you go. Like, learn the what, because you just thought that it was like muscle memory and you would just yeah, remember it? Like, hi, like, hi, I'm Louisa. And then that was it. He was just spinning around like a, I don't even know. Um, wow. So no, I don't get to, I don't still dance like any Latin or, or ballroom. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to do another show where I get to sort of use what I've learned. Yeah, um, it's just like the all round showbiz Oh, experience so isn't fun. it i love dancing so much yeah. i wanted to be a dancer but like when i was little yeah um, so that's why for me it was just like being able to you know yeah, it's amazing and do yeah. i still speak to vincent yeah i do um vincent's wife actually is really good friends with my mum oh wow yeah they How really good so, good. so i sort of hear about what's going on with him a lot through her yeah um, but yeah yeah we do we speak every now and then obviously oh god good. i'm so jealous can't believe yeah. it how jealous i am um right well we have got some time now if anyone who's watching wants to ask louisa something in the moment something that like i'm just going to scroll up because i like you said you kind of end up did you both yeah. go to acting school uh i didn't so you can take this one <laughs> i went to sylvia young which is a secondary school so from the age of 10 to 16 well because i started early so from 10 to 16 i went 
Um, and we did academic classes and we also did drama, dancing, singing, and all of the rest of it. But then I left there at 16, so now I didn't go to drama school as in university. Yeah, or any yeah. Of it. we kind of trained on the job. So at least in that sense, we kind of had But you know what we did? Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. I mean, I said in my first my, my first episode, I don't think I could have learned what I actually know or what I learned in those two years about acting on screen yeah, so without different. doing it. It's so because people keep saying, like a lot of my friends keep saying to me, "Why don't you do like a workshop or something for acting on screen?" And I'm like, "What do I know?" And they're like, "That's what you've done your whole life." Yeah, yeah, it's funny and it's, how I, yeah, it's such an art, and it's there's so many there's such a different language as well in terms of all of the technical aspects of it that if someone's just saying it to you you're like what i don't know what yeah, 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 and yeah. it changes so much because of technology changing in terms yeah. of you know so God. True. like back when we were started out you were still having your focus marks measured with a tape measure wow yeah yeah bad, wow. bad times now um, i know I just, how to film at a social distance i mean there you go that's true um i've missed so many hold on i'm so sorry um oh francesca mcgovern how do you get an agent Oh, it's, it's such a hard question so many people ask me this I've got my agent through the school that I went to and then obviously I've been able to move to different agencies ever since because of mm -hmm. jobs that I've had starting out I guess you just have to continue to write 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 try and do some sort of self tapes if you can and send them in because I think agents get flooded daily with emails and letters and emails and letters and I always think if they can actually physically see something in front of them they might go oh and they might see something mm. in you that they that they like um it's about I don't know because there's notice. so many different ways in it's not just as simple as how do you get an agent you know there's not there's yeah. not one answer for that and it's but so different now as well because you you can reach an audience from your bedroom you know you can you can have a following and you can you know, do videos and play characters online and get noticed that way. Whereas well, before you... lockdown, there was, there was quite a lot of like famous actors that were doing one on one sessions online. So I don't know yeah. if you saw any of that to yeah. give people tips and just to sort of, you know, ex expose them in, in some way. Mm. Um, and yeah, that is the thing now. You can, you can upload videos all you want on your own social media. Yeah. Don't let I be doing a monologue anytime soon. <laughs> no, I can't remember what the last time I even learned a monologue. <laughs> God, that's, yeah, I don't know. I, I literally can't remember the last time I learned a monologue. I'm so bad at them. I'm so bad at that and lists. If I have to learn a list, I'm terrible. Yeah. Oh, God, I don't know how people who have to do medical speak do that. Oh, that's so hard to learn. Yeah. Um, Ruby, <laughs> Louisa, what's next for you and Martin? Oh, I'm really not allowed to say anything. <laughs> Because obviously I spoke to work and said I was doing this and they were like, don't give anything away. And I was like, okay. Um, but obviously I think what's known is that Stacey comes back. So I'm guessing there's going to be lots of drama surrounding that. Cool. But I hope that Ruby and Martin get to like stay together. I think they're great. So many people have been saying that. <laughs> Literally as we've been chatting. So really? many people have been like, really? oh my God, we love them. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, I think it's great. Because it's also so, because obviously like working with Lacey is just the best thing in the world to play Stacey. So it just means that there's then room for us to get loads of stuff together. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. Um, I think this is probably going to be the last question because we're running out of time. But um, Lady Serial has asked, how important is it to have a good network with people in the industry? Ooh. It's such a hard know, question because honestly so many of my jobs have come through people i know look at the film that we did yeah exactly that was through someone that i knew that we yeah. knew um but at the same time i'm really bad at the whole networking thing i've tried it before especially like when i went out to la i was so focused on it's about who you know and like having sit down chats with the right people and i'm not good at it i find it all a bit fake yeah i think you either sure? get well with someone or you don't and don't force that and also people either that's a really difficult question i, I think, think it's when you've worked with somebody sorry you go, go no you go okay i was just gonna say when you've worked with somebody that you vibed with when you've worked with someone who you're like oh i i get on with you I get, i've got a rapport with you it's it's less about networking and more about just like checking in just being like hey 
what's going on for you right now? And that could be across the board. It, can, it doesn't have to be actors, it can be creatives, it can be people you've worked with who are in totally different departments. But if you get on with them, that's, that's you know, that's something quite special. But yeah. I would say it's, it's definitely about if there's a connection with somebody, it's just keeping on their radar, just checking well, in every now and then. You do have to keep up, you know, and I've done it in the past. I've been around directors that I've worked with before, producers that I've worked with before, just been like, hey, just checking in, just see what's going on. Yeah. Because you kind of have to do that. But yeah. there are people that I could genu that I know would receive that email and be like, oh, it's Louisa, and not be like, oh, why is she emailing me? Mm -hmm. You know, like you've got to be, Yeah. I would say, but I know some people that are all about the network and they yeah. don't really hang around with anyone but people in the industry and that's, you know, good for them, but it's not me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Am I still here? Yeah, oh. you kept freezing, but you're back. Why am I so... Can you see... Only see half my head? No. Oh, I can only see half my own head now. That's weird. Yeah, not at all. I just was, I was just reporting some people who are being absolutely ridiculous on here. So lovely, what they ain't got time for this sort of shit on here. Bye. Why are people so mean? It's weird. It's weird. Anyway, they've been reported now for abusive comment content. So bye. Lovely. Um, yeah, people are weird. Oh, cute. I love you on the bill as well. Was that before EastEnders? No, after. So I was 18 oh, was when I there. I was wow. there for two years, but I looked oh my God. It was so silly. <laughs> <laughs> I loved God. it. But I looked, when I look back now, I'm like, I look so young. Like, how is that even allowed? Were you a, were you a cop? Yeah. Because oh. in real life, you can be 18. There's no height restriction. <laughs> so it was legal. Um, <laughs> But PC Beth really Green cool. is iconic. I looked really young, so it was a bit like I looked like I was dressing up. <laughs> no. Oh. oh well, there's a lot of love for for PC Beth Green on here. That's for sure. It's so funny. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna wrap it up because otherwise I can't save it, and lots of people are saying, "Can you save this live so that okay. I can so they can watch it later?" But okay. we will catch up again we offline. Have we have and to. And it'll be so nice to just now chat we to can you. leave the house. We'll come down. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so much for, for, you know, coming on here and being honest and sharing your stuff. Thank and you, Tilly. I'm just so glad it. you're doing it because all we do as people is go, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and you're doing it, so that's great. Yeah, it's happening. So yeah, thank good. you, thank you, thank you, and, yeah. uh, and good luck, and good luck for when he sends us back on. Yeah, thank you, and I'll speak to you soon. I'll yeah, speak to you soon. That's all right. Bye-bye. Okay. So I'm going to do this now because last week I just got so scared. I was like, that's the end. It's all gone. But I, I didn't tell you about who was coming up next week. And obviously that was Louisa. Um, but next week I've got my first boy. Ooh, we are, we are, uh, we're interviewing we, <laughs> the royal we. Uh, I have an actor who has, he's, been in all sorts of things he's been a lead role in huge netflix series he's on netflix right now in a series um but he's known for a character that he played in a series called game of thrones and uh it's weird because he should be known for the things that he's done that he's a bigger part in um and i want to talk to him about that because i think that would be an interesting angle um, so I'll be announcing who that guest is on probably Thursday, maybe Friday. So stay tuned and I'll be talking to him on Monday next week, back to the usual time of half past eight. And, uh, thank you for being with us and for watching my interview with Louisa. And I will be saving it onto my, uh, grid straight after this. So you can catch up, um, and, uh, watch it. If you want to have an update quickly about my mushrooms, because obviously I know you do, here they are. They're looking great. Also, lots of people saying about my hair. I am using Imbue products. They sent a PR box. I've been using them for two weeks. I've got a meeting tomorrow with Michelle, who created the brand. I can't wait to bend her ear about their products and find out 
how she made such amazing stuff and I'm going to get loads of loads of info that I'm going to share with you all and uh yeah I, I can't wait so um they look anyone who's bagging my mushrooms on here just get out okay I love my mushrooms and they're my friends and on that I will see you all next week um I've got some other exciting videos coming up for the rest of the week and a really really big one um next week obviously my IGTV as well. So it's all happening here on April J Pearson Instagram account. And uh, yeah, keep in touch, message me, ask some questions. Louise is probably gonna be able to answer some questions if you, if you didn't get your question answered. And I will see you on the next one.